Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Effing with the Ineffable. I am Zoe. I'm Smokey Pingleton. And I have no idea what episode number this is because we have been filming like, I don't know, once a month lately. Erratically. Yeah. Irregularly. My weekends in October are pretty busy, crazy planned already. Um, Yeah, I think I have plans already all the rest of the weekends in October, but we, uh, we just went to mass together, which we haven't, we don't, don't normally do that now these days, but, um, no, sometimes on Sundays, but not usually. Yeah. Anymore. Cause we have our church that we like to go to and they go, go to a different church. Usually we, we go for convenience, give us convenience or give us death. And I go for, well, I like the, I like the way that the priest celebrates mass at the church that we go to but i also like the community aspect and the like the way they do faith formation and all that stuff i think it's i think it's a good place for people with kids families and stuff so we don't mind drive through confession (laughs) (laughs) yeah um so yeah anyway so we just thought we would film Um, yeah yeah it's been a while. Yeah. So what's happened since we last talked? I don't even know. I, I don't remember the last time we filmed. I mean. It was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Anyway. It was probably a month ago. Yeah. What did I we even know. talk about? I think. We were talking about, uh, I'm sure, the. Uh, I remember we talking, talking about, about abortion. Brit- Britney Spears. <laughs> I think that was a while ago. She's been, hey, she's been freed now. We don't need to worry about her anymore. Yeah. She all is all is well. Is that true? Yes. Is she freed? I, yes. I didn't even know. Yeah. She's free to be as Britney as she wants to be. I I, I just completely I don't read the news. <laughs> I was telling my dad this morning there was a quote. It's a my, good quote. I was thinking about it all the way over here. Yeah, my my husband sent me this quote from Mark Twain. I'm gonna read it exactly so I don't mess it up, but um Come on, you know what it is. I, I but I think the gist of it was basically if, if you, you read, don't pay attention okay, to the news. If you don't read the newspaper, you're uninformed. If you do, you're misinformed. So I I feel like that's that's the exact quote. I feel like There's that's a genius in there. Yeah, Mark that's Twain. totally true about the news these days. So anyway, I don't read the news. That's don't know anything it, about Britney. It's not just these days. Mark Twain said that. <laughs> probably before the turn of the century yeah so the last century (laughs) yeah exactly so yeah anyway um what'd you think of the latin mass was that your first time no i had been to i had not been to a latin mass quite like that i had been father dan used to do latin masses but he would do them uh, not with the different orientation, like orientum and all that. Yeah, stuff. It so was, he would do. It was Latin. a lot more like the f- phrases were in Latin, but the structure was still kind of the Novus Ordo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was just like in the in the Latin language. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, it was good. It was a low mass. So, you know, it's not quite like the high mass. There's a lot more to it. I actually don't know. I don't think I've ever been to a high mass. I've seen them like online, but I've never been to one. Um, the high mass is there's a, there's more like incense. And I think there's more things um, like there's the, the sprinkling of the water as you process. Which isn't to say stuff. a low mass is necessarily low it's still much yeah. higher much higher it's than most that... experiences that you can get you see my hand no <laughs> you can't it's above yeah. usual human experience it's very it's just very this, quiet though this is <laughs> below the mass even the low mass the thing i like the thing i like about the latin mass and and i like it about the low mass is that it's it's very um it facilitates contemplation and that it's very quiet like there's not very dignified there's not a lot of like responses that you need to do as a person and there's not a lot of stuff that you can hear no i mean they call it like the priest is doing the presentation for the 
uh, you know, accept the sacrifice at your hands. Yeah. He's doing it toward God. He's not doing it for us. He is doing it for us. I mean, we, we have our parts of the liturgy, but they're, they're much more attenuated in the, in that form. Yeah. It is hard going to Latin mass with little kids. I mean, going to mass at all with kids, the, the mat, the regular novus ordo, which we normally go to is a little bit easier because there's more things that they can hear and pick up on, which, you know, makes them because, because my kids can't read yet. So like when I'm following along in my, the novus missile, ordo is good for kids. Well, I, there's parts of it that it's are much more, it's much more accessible. <laughs> kind of like drive, kind of like drive through confession. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. accessible, but is it really effective? <laughs> it's accessible in that, like, you can get you can get more of a sense of what's going on without really knowing. Mm-hmm. You can just go and like if a if a person who didn't know anything about Catholicism went to the mass that we went to the to today, mm-hmm. I don't think they would really have any. I mean, they can see the gestures and they can like even if you don't hear the mass at all, you can see the gestures of like setting a table, offering a, offering a sacrifice, cleaning up the table mm-hmm. and like being done, but. In the liturgy of the word, I mean. And yeah. The, and the prayers, the set of prayers. Yeah. But yes, if you're, so if you, if you don't, if you don't know anything about the mass, it is easier. And if you can't read, like I said, cause you know, I'm in my missal, I like reading along to see what the priest is saying. Cause the prayers in the Latin mass are, I think like even more beautiful than in the novus ordo so i get to read along with it but my kids don't know how to read yet so there's a lot of just arguing and uh i need like a i need like one of those uh announcers like the like the guys who do the cornhole play-by-play but even more so like the golf play-by-play because they're like oh because they're like quiet approaching his t-shirt yeah (laughs) he's lining it up it looks like it's about 300 yards (laughs) We're using a new microphone today. Very fancy setup here. Yeah, right. In my very blank, like this is like the worst background ever for a podcast, but uh, actually, I don't know. Is it worse than Joe Biden's basement? Oh, somebody's... <laughs> We're filming. Leave us alone. That's my closet door. Um. Anyway, <laughs> what was I saying? I don't know. So yeah, Latin mass. It's great. I love it. I wish we had more of it but um yeah i'll take it when i can what else is new well did you have a topic you wanted to talk about you brought a piece of paper with you i had a topic that i kind of wanted you know we've stacked up a bunch of topics my dad said i keep sending you i know my dad sent me a lot of emails of like hey save this for if we want to do a topic um my do you want to talk about my work allows me a lot of time for (laughs) reading reflection (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Contemplation. I, it facilitates I, I, contemplation. I can, I can read everything that Mises.org and Libertarian.org and all the gun companies send me about all the different reflections on what's wrong with the government. Yeah. Uh, so I get a lot of chances to think about things. And then I, uh, when I come across something that I think is like, oh, maybe that's something to think more about. I sent it to Zoe and she's like, yeah, I'll put that in the container that I use to hold the things that you've sent me. Recycle. <laughs> I do save all the, <laughs> I save all the things in our podcast folder on my <laughs> Gmail, but I just, uh, first of all, I don't have a lot of time to read things these days. Right. I've just, well, you're I'm doing, just you're doing homeschooling. Yeah, we're homeschooling. You're still getting the house in order. Uh, yeah. you guys have only had one car and you've and uh your hubby's been uh, starting a job yeah so. he got a job which is news i guess yeah. um but you're getting a second car tomorrow hopefully hopefully yeah so that that should help with the it's just been hard because every day we have to go pick him up right at five so we have to leave here at like 4 30 then we go get them then by the time we get home and then i make dinner it's like 6 30. Nobody cares. I'm just saying like, <laughs> so then like all my, the time that I normally do chores and stuff is after dinner, but it's, it's been so late. Cause anyway, it's, it's been chaos. So, yeah. 
So the smoky, so the smoky P uh, missives go right into the trash. Uh, they're not in the trash. They just go in the save for later folder. But let's talk about me now. I okay. I'm buying some land. I don't know. If oh we, yeah. Did we mention that last time? I don't know if that was happening last time. I think it probably was. I mean, it's probably you know, in the we've works. Talked, we've talked. Got some about land just just across the border. And uh, it's a very Into a different state, not a different country. Correct, right? You said across the border. I mean, yeah. Well, that's we're a border not too. not Mexican border, not Canadian border. No. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> not the county border. There's a lot of borders. It's the border of Pigletonia, <laughs> <laughs> my new sovereign land the state yeah <laughs> no it's uh yeah and it's oh. in the, it's 20 acres and it's really overgrown and it's really uh hilly and there's a great uh, did we talk about this the graveyard Maybe? i don't think we talked about know. this on yeah. here okay yeah it's got a graveyard so it's consecrated land it's hallowed hallowed ground and um yeah so that's that's exciting it's something i'm going to be cutting a lot of trees and weed whacking a lot of weeds and uh what do they call that uh, hogging a lot of hogging a lot of brush have you ever heard of a, a, a brush hog or a bush hog no no it's a Is device it? that you hook up to a tractor or something it just cuts down brush and it's and yeah it's basically a lawnmower that can be pressed up against stuff and like sounds dangerous grind, grind it right down i bet it is yeah <laughs> if you don't know how to operate it which yeah uh, we'll be learning. i don't know how to operate it you might end up in that graveyard I may, by the end of this I may be i may be a puddle of oh, minced God. smoky pigleton <laughs> oh i hope not i hope not but and i went to see the doctor yesterday and the doctor said you're fat. It's like, what? I he want said, a second opinion. As Norm You dress funny too. <laughs> oh, come on. Really? As Norm MacDonald says, uh, he told me, open your mouth and say oink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's about right. It's oh, fun. Norm's died since we did this. That's right. Class, yeah. I miss him. He was, I love yeah, Norm he McDonald. was hilarious. He's my favorite comedian. So. Yeah. He was not popular among the uh, the wokists. No, but he was very popular among even the woke comedians because they recognized his comic genius. Yeah. you know, he was just so uh, just his delivery was yeah. hilarious. Yeah, he didn't even have to say much. He just the way he said it was very funny. Um, so, I miss you, Norm. Yeah. So I've been watching a lot of Norm videos on YouTube. Right. But yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, he, ta he talked about. I'm a deeply closeted Norm fan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, what did you have other topics you wanted uh, to talk about? I don't know. This is something I wrote down the other day. I don't even remember writing this. Something <laughs> that about was good. If there's a, there's good a, water. A, well, one of these things that keeps coming up. They keep saying that democracy is under attack. There's an existential threat to democracy, which I disagree. I agree that if there was such a thing as democracy, it would be under threat the way things are progressing now. Yeah, we don't really live However, in a democracy though. However, democracy does not exist. So there is, there is uh, inherently- No threat. No ability to be a threat existentially <laughs> to something that does not exist. <laughs> yeah. Democracy. It's like a threat of extinction of unicorns. Right. It yeah. Doesn't exist. Yeah. The unicorns. You see on the endangered list, like twenty-three more. You didn't. You don't watch the I news. I don't read the news. Twenty-three more species declared extinct. Wow. In, in the U.S. And so, but anyway, so I was looking up democracy. What does democracy mean? What is demos? Generally, demos, the Greek word, is. Um, defined as people, uh, but it's it also traditionally refers to a village. It's the village. Hmm. And crassy means the government, 
yeah. uh, the rulers and at the base power. So it's it's democracy is in one way of thinking village power, yeah. which we don't have village power anymore. There is centralized power across the United States, um, but there is no there is no empowerment on a local basis, which is th part of the problem. Yeah, that that lack of centralization has taken away the power from the people and put it in the hands of the bureaucrats you know the people the the federal crats yeah who are able then to pretty much run the show and uh manage things one of the things that came out since we last talked was is this vaccine mandate that's now being pushed yeah uh, more and more across a lot of different places, which is probably uh, certainly an overreach of power again, uh, probably even illegal. Um, although uh, the, you know, the way things have been going, it seems like they've been allowing more and more federal um, incursions into people's liberties. Yeah. So they'll probably allow this to stand a lot of people. Um, a lot of people will. And I guess the, the government does have the ability to decide who they're going to hire and all that stuff, although they uh, said that it was without regard to uh, race, color, creed, blah, blah, blah. That's what Greta Thunberg said, blah, blah, blah. Did you see that? You didn't see that. I saw she was in the news she only the because news. I get I go on YouTube and I see her face on a thumbnail. Mom like, didn't like it, but I thought, hey, good for you, Greta. I don't know. I don't agree with her uh, necessarily her stance on a lot of stuff, but I really, you know, approve of her passion. She's like the government just says blah blah blah, a lot of words, not much action. They don't do much to make things go better. It's like Greta. Sounds like a Donald Trump quote, honestly. See, <laughs> I, I disagree. Greta, the best thing the government can do is be inactive. That's absolutely true. I was hoping that we would not be able to pass a reconciliation bill and the government would shut down. The only reason I know about that is because that was going to affect my husband's job. If the... If the courts if were the, closed, he can't work. Well, it's not that he can't work, but he's doing uh, real estate law. And so with real estate law, when the government is shut down, the tax system gets messed up and like mm. registration of deeds and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So that was going to really affect his work. So that's really the only reason I knew about that is mm -hmm. because it, and I was kind of like, man, that'd be nice if the government shut down. The, um, the federal, but, and that's yeah. why, you know, the federal government is too big is because there's a threat yeah. when it's shut yeah. down. Yeah, Why I mean, should that be so a much. threat here in our village? Yeah, that shouldn't. should not be a threat. The power to run our village should be in our village. Yeah, that's democracy, not people voting for some, like my wife says, either some orange skinned clown or some decrepit bag of oatmeal. <laughs> that's that should not be the choice on democracy. We should have a lot more options and they should be a lot more local. Well, and once again, like we've said, there are more than two parties. It's not like we have, it, it's not like the, that is the only option, but it's probable that those are the and only two big, people that- That's a big but. That those, it's probable <laughs> that those are the only two people who are gonna get elected, so. That's a huge but. Yeah. That's a huge stinky a big, but. A big, yeah. That's an awful, pimply but <laughs> all right enough it's interesting that a supposedly democracy doesn't smell like democracy to me it's interesting talking about democracy because like um my so i'm doing early american history in uh in your school in homeschool with my daughter and along with latin yeah and mathematics <laughs> and latin <laughs> Um, if you know that quote, put it in the comments and I'll give you a <laughs> thumbs up. Anyway, um, 
no what was i saying oh yeah so so we're, early we're learning american about early history. american history and we start with the vikings who discovered america and then we go on to the native americans who were you know here first and all that stuff um when do you get, when do you get to 1619 that's when american history really took. started right they uh i mean Leif that's Aaron, what i wrote that's what i wrote on here leaf erickson would disagree he would say he would say it started and uh, the native americans would Finland. certainly disagree yeah, exactly anyway the aztecs the incans they would be saying what are we chopped chopped guacamole <laughs> it's just interesting talking about different foreign like it, it's not we it, I mean, this is a kindergarten level history class. Really, we're we're just getting a broad picture of like things in the way they used to be through reading books, mm -hmm. through reading like books about people who lived at the time and stuff. Um, it's a very American like, Girl doll books. Uh, some of them. I mean, it's like yeah, she's been reading Kaya, the Native American girl doll. Um, it's a it's a very Charlotte Mason esque living book type of curriculum, but the the whole point is it, it has brought up stuff about um, different forms of government because you know in in the Norse uh, system they had basically like a monarchy you know they basically had kind of it was more tribal who, who was but, able to become king. And it was it's probably the strongest person. Yeah. They probably had battles yeah. to decide who was king. But then they had moots too. I don't know if you, if you read about moots. We, we didn't do a deep dive. But okay. anyway, it was, I mean, we, we, we just knew that like, I mean, Eric the Red, he was kind of, he got kicked out of uh, Norway or whatever, whatever. Yeah, Norway for being a murderer. And then he took a bunch of people. You kill one guy, you're a murderer. <laughs> you kill everybody you need to. You're a conqueror. Yeah, you're Genghis Khan. So, I mean, he. you say tomato, I say tomato. <laughs> but he, anyway, this is going down the path. But the whole point of this was just to say, like, it's brought up the idea of, like, what is a monarchy? What is, what are the different kinds of, of ruling? What are the different kinds of archies that we have? Yeah, and that, that has been like an interesting conversation to have with my um, daughter. Also, we got a, a magazine in the mail from Tuttle Twins. They started a magazine. Um, we only have the, we only got like a sample issue because I think we've, you know, bought books from them in the past and stuff. So they sent us a, a sample, but it was talking a lot about the Fed, like the Federal Reserve. Yeah. And um, so that brought up some really good, interesting conversations too about yeah. should the Federal Reserve exist? And it was talking about all these bureaucratic agencies. And it, they were saying, you know, there's so many of these federal agencies that the government doesn't even keep a list of all of them. Uh, partly because there's there's almost too many to count and also because they just don't want us to know they don't right. they don't want us to know about how like how many and all these people behind the scenes who are really making legislation for all of us yeah. in a completely non-democratic way to get back to your point so what was my point D democracy doesn't exist there. oh yes democracy <laughs> does not exist not in its current state anyway not not in the the real classical sense of what a democracy should be yeah obviously there is voting and uh any any attempts to infringe on people's ability to vote uh needs to be taken seriously at the same time any subversion of what how those votes are uh, collected and authorized needs to be looked at too. So I think they're, you know, they're basically like I was making a joke about drive-through confession. They're going to make drive-through voting. You know, they're just making it so that you, you don't, don't even have you to, don't have to be there. You can right? You can you can send it in from home, yeah. but uh, without any kind of need for identification yeah. and. Uh, you know, authentication that uh, the person who is actually voting is the person who is uh, for whom the ballot is uh, dispensed. So 
you know, that's, that's a problem too. That's a threat to democracy on the other end. Yeah. Um, and democracy is obviously, you know, there's checks and balances and there's a needs for that. Um, there, at least it was, um, the American democracy was originally planned to have checks and balances. That seems to have gone out the window now. Yeah. Um, executive branch just seems to when you can make dominate. an executive order about anything. Yeah, executives are just making it's just, making law. Yeah. Um, which is not their not their role. But anyway, so yeah, so I was writing down here's some of the things I said. Uh, anarchy if we can, minarchy if we must. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Why stop at 1619? Why stop at 1492? Why stop at all uh, in the criticism of government? Um, does it matter when things went wrong? Why not go back to creation? What's the most democratic structure? What gives most power to the people? Mob rule, federated powers, local governments, self-determination. That seems to give everyone power over their life. Just as the colonies rejected imperial power, uh, states, even counties, need to be more invested in representing their demos, the villagers. One size fits all, fits none well. That's about the federal government. And local why? government can be tailored to the local needs and even then uh, still be extremely limited. And then I wrote down 1100 BC, that was when the Israelites rejected the judges and, and said that they wanted a king. Yeah. They were told of what the dangers of that would be, but they still chose subjugation. And I've, I'm afraid that's the problem with human nature. Even before that, even before that, sure. when, when God, I mean, like Moses leads them out of Egypt, they're literally- The Garden of Eden. They're literally, <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. But like, they're literally slaves. In, right. in Egypt, and they want to And as to soon stay. as they get out and get it's get like, hungry and thirsty, they're like, like "I want why some, you bring us out here to die." I want some pork. Yeah, the Egyptians had some tasty. Pork. I'd rather die like a well-fed slave. I want to go back and get a cheese steak, and you guys are like bringing me out here, and I'm having to eat dirt, manna, and quail. Oh, okay. So this, <laughs> this brings up two things that I wanted to say. First of all, it brought up a lot of thoughts, but yeah, I mean, I've been thinking a lot about human nature lately um, because I've been listening to... Because isn't it a shame <laughs> well, how people are, <laughs> how uh, I am, mea well, culpa, I, mea culpa. Well, it's also... What one of the thing? Well, for first of all, I just want to say I, I find it interesting that even my friends who are very liberal, leftist, you could say, leaning toward more like socialism, wanting equity, that kind of thing. I've had conversations with my friends who are like, they we've we were talking about public schools and why public schools are terrible. And they were saying, you know, it's so unfair because Texas wants to teach creationism, but there's only a certain limited number of textbook manufacturers. And because Texas as a state has like mandated it, then the textbook manufacturers want to put it in all the books. So basically every, every science book has to, which like, I don't even know, like, I don't, I don't know exactly you what they're talking publish. about different versions <laughs> the of point, books the point that the point that i was going to say is is that <laughs> they were making the case even as even coming from a liberal stance that like we should have more local control over what we teach in schools and it's like yeah that we should have more local control over every aspect of our lives so i just thought that that was interesting that even my liberal friends realized like man it kind of sucks when the whole country has to teach the, the same thing about right. a different about a certain subject or whatever um and that's another say, part like, of the problem with public school is that you have to teach to the curriculum. lowest common denominator yeah, yeah, yeah. to the you teach to the test yes because you need a certain test score to and, not get fired and, 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 and so you spend a hundred 
and 80 days yeah. going over the test. It's like, okay, what's the answer to five? What do you think, guys? We've we've gone over this a hundred times. Yeah, yeah. Which and, and so that's why, like, as a as and a, so I know you don't need to understand it. You just need to get the right answer. You just need to write it down. <laughs> I mean that that's the hard thing that that's and that's a huge reason why I homeschool is because there are there are certain subjects that I'm like, do my kids really need to know calculus? Like I took AP calculus in school. I don't remember any of it. I know there's like derivatives. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how it works anymore. Like I didn't need to know that. Derivatives. There could have been so many things that I could have learned in that time that would have served me better in my function as like an adult and what I'm doing. That could have helped you to understand what calculus is and how it works rather than just how to write, how to write out the the the, different problems problems yeah without really ever understanding how it works without ever you know the problem is people don't even understand basic number systems bill yeah. Maher was bill Maher was talking last night uh you know mom watches that all the time uh i think he's funny he's he's actually pretty level-headed for a, a pinhead <laughs> he's got a small head but it's very level um the uh, he was saying that there was a recent poll taken and they they were asking uh teachers uh who who was the first man on the moon um and they, they were a lot of them were were getting it a lot of them weren't uh and then they asked him who was the first man on the sun and and, and some of them said i'm a teacher i should know this um oh, is it lance armstrong oh, God. <laughs> and i don't know if he was just making a joke yeah unfortunately i that's not a joke a lot of teachers have been taught according to the method yeah and have no understanding of how to think about yeah. things how to learn things they just wrote uh absorb things and spit it back out yeah uh without ever having it become uh, a structure in their mind yeah they're not able to think about things in a rational way you know it's the it, i saw you bumper see those, sticker. B- those bumper yeah. stickers that always say critical well, thinking. thinking is the national deficit <laughs> yeah, right. true national deficit around. <laughs> i'm just gonna bring that up yeah i i think that <laughs> i think that nothing has actually prepared me better it's interesting because I, so I was a philosophy major in school, one of my majors, and it's kind of like, that's kind of a useless major in the sense that like, I can't get a paying job with that degree. But as far as like having critical thinking skills and teaching my children, I think it's actually been tremendously beneficial. Um, I have to now, say- I don't, I don't, agree with the way that most philosophy is taught in the university because i think universities are just factories for modernist postmodern like theories and stuff and i think it's it's usually done pretty badly but i did have some some good teachers who did a good job um i was going to say I, my my feeling about latin is exactly the same having taken latin uh, that was one of the most influential courses that I took. I had to take it because back then the university I was attending insisted that well, I didn't have to take Latin, but I chose to take Latin. They insisted that you take a foreign language, which is probably a good insistence. I, I, that's probably been dropped now because it made we too, had to take because it. it was too too sensible. We had to take it. and I took logic. As a foreign language. As a foreign language. <laughs> I mean, it's that's, that's about as useful. That, there's something to that that's a, that is deeply true. That's about as logic useful is as a Latin, foreign, though. Logic is a foreign language here in America. <laughs> it's, it's not like you're going to go to a country where Latin is the first language. But, I know, but yes. Latin makes you think about English and the concepts 
and the yeah. and the moving back and forth makes you really analyze what the concepts are and what makes sense and it really teaches critical thinking yeah uh just in the in the structure of trying to move back and forth between things it really helps you to communicate better yeah uh, and it really helps you to understand what people are communicating and what and and the degradation of communication that yeah. has taken place <laughs> i don't understand half the words that people use anymore because they're made up internet lingo like finsta somebody was saying finsta the other day it's like I have no idea what that means. Uh, it, you know, uh, it was spoken in Congress as yeah. though it was a, a concept that was uh, relevant to yeah. Congress. Yeah. You know what fence to me? <laughs> Is it fake Insta? Yeah, it's a fake Insta. I didn't know that until one of my siblings told me yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, so I don't know. I don't, but once again, I don't really go much on the internet aside from like, Catholic blogs. My, and I don't want to sound I don't want to sound like a fuddy duddy because it's awesome that people have Instagram. It's awesome that people have the internet. It's awesome that people have email and Facebook and all these social media. All these social media have the potential to really help connect people and to really help people share ideas, as does things like yeah. podcasts, things like you know, all the different things. Uh, that allow people to express themselves. But the way that people are expressing themselves is so base and just fl frankly uninteresting. Yeah. Uh, that's another thing that Bill Maher, you know, said last night is, you know, this Gabby Petito and this Brian uh, Laundry Truck or whatever his name is, uh, the, the guy who killed his girlfriend. Uh, they allegedly been, allegedly the only and reason i know about this is and then, my... <laughs> and then disappeared yeah um i know appar I apparently know the bounty hunter is hunting for him yeah maybe on the appalachian trail but the the point was not that their whole story but their whole backstory they had been this is a young couple unmarried just dating or whatever that had been traveling around for months and months creating content by mm -hmm. documenting life in their van and going from one uh national park to another oh, i didn't even realize that was what they were doing and and so bill maher said when is when has that become a job <laughs> where just being content yourself creation. and doing whatever you want to do and documenting that becomes some form of livelihood you know i mean and that's what we're doing right now you know? this is not so, a form of livelihood for us yeah no I, I no mean, it would be nice but uh just but yeah content creation yeah content creation and just that whole thing there's there's something that is genius about that there's also something that is really hollow about it because people don't bother to uh, develop skills or talents that allow them to create interesting or enlightening content. They just take selfies where they're. Well, this is like actually something. What, I what, what's the face that like people in? Duck face. That's that's <laughs> like old. That's like old. That's pig now, face. But... Okay. Anyway, <laughs> this is something I actually struggle with is like, I, I feel like there's a, there's an Instagram. I, I actually do like Instagram. I find it to be good because I, I, I can tailor it very severely so that I'm only seeing things that I want to see. Um, Which is good. Caveat yeah. enter. And I, and if you put garbage into your head, yeah, your head's going to be full of garbage. And so much of, so much of what I follow is, is Catholic people who are talking about catholic things and um one of the guys that i follow is called do the harder thing and he um i like that name yeah he he, he has his that's the key to recovery i always tell the yeah. guys i always tell the guys at at work you know what uh addiction is about doing the doing the easy thing doing the comfortable thing. yeah 
recovery is about doing the harder thing. The yeah, thing he, that makes your life more valuable, that adds value to your life. The work yeah. that needs to be done. He started as like a, um, basically a ministry for like porn addiction recovery mm, mm-hmm. because he, he like lost his marriage basically from, um, mm. from, I, I, mean, I think there's more to it than that, but he definitely credits his uh his porn addiction as part of the reason why he got divorced but anyway so now he credits or i'd say that's probably more of like a blame credit means it's like, yeah you know, well saying yeah. it's a good thing yeah he he attributes <laughs> okay. he attributes part of it why did i bring this up um oh something he's saying all the time is that it's all rot if it's not bringing you closer to if it's not pointing you toward jesus it's all rot and i feel like so much of you go on YouTube and it's like, there's, there's thousands of hours of content being uploaded every second because mm-hmm. people are just like, my life's interesting. I'll put it on the internet. For interesting other people to, to me and, and maybe I, somebody else will think so too. And I think like, I, I mean, that's what we're doing. And I struggle with that because I'm like, is this a, is this a quote unquote ministry or service that we're actually helping people point the, themselves toward a, a greater good toward becoming their better selves? I think, That's it, has my that goal. Po- I think it has that potential. Yeah. Uh, but actually just, it, it, it's like taking Latin, just the doing of it, I think is good for us. Yeah. 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 yeah I agree. In that we then have a dialogue. We then have to speak our thoughts out loud. We have to be more, mindful of the concepts that we're holding yeah. and you know air those beliefs in public if you air those beliefs in public and all of a sudden you realize man that was what i just said this was stupid <laughs> yeah. how did i get there oh you know that makes you that makes you step back and take a look at yourself and and develop a little more self knowledge and to thine own self be true yeah you know so even just the, the the structure of it, if nobody ever watches this, which it's likely. Is, is, a, is a strong possibility, uh, it's still worthwhile yeah. in that it was um, fun to do and probably somewhat self-improving. There's a, yeah. there's a self-improvement to it. Uh, if it's a benefit to somebody else, awesome. If it's not, you're lost. Sorry. It's kind of like therapy. Though, Double your I, money back. It's kind of like therapy though, in a way where like, I exactly I've like started, therapy. like I started doing like teletherapy, whatever mental health counseling, like recently. Um, and it's funny because the very first time I talked to my counselor, I was like, I already know all the things I need to be doing. I'm like, I know I need to be a better consumer of my thoughts. I need to like take care of my body and my mind and like do all these things. And she's like, okay, but like, it's still, even if you know these things, she's like, even therapists need to go to therapy because you need to, it's, it's kind of like through the act of talking it out that you kind of synthesize those things and maybe realize, and like through through talking to her, I have realized things that like awareness, yeah, accountability, a lot of those things that they they teach you in the virtues, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Being aware of what's going on in yourself, and there's no better way to, to be do. aware of that than to have to process it enough to express it. Yeah. Accountability means expressing it to somebody else and saying, "Hey, this is what I say I'm going to do." That's. What, I was talking with my doctor yesterday, and it's like I know what I need to do. I yeah. Need to, quit acting on appetite yeah. and act more on uh health <laughs> yeah you know do the healthy thing do the hard yeah. do the next hard thing yeah, <laughs> rather yeah. than eat the next Reese's peanut butter cup <laughs> and it's like, yeah okay Which is hard because all the shelves right now are lined with candy for <laughs> Halloween <laughs> everything is Halloween candy lately yeah everything I'm putting in my mouth is anyway <laughs> Oh man. But anyway, so what was the, what was the point? Uh, therapy, accountability. Yeah. And... Yeah. Therapy. Yeah. You, you feel like it's a benefit? I do. I, I, I've, I've actually like, it's hard because it's like, like I said, my life is chaos lately. So I'm literally like talking to it's her. It's always going to be. I know. I yeah. know. I know. There's it's... never a good time to do anything. I know. 
And once the baby comes, it's going to be Which means it's hard. always the right time to do the next hard thing. I'm just saying it's hard to make time to talk to her because it's like, I have to, like we're doing here, I have to have my husband watch my kids and I have to lock myself in the room because otherwise I get interrupted every two seconds, which, you know, like I love my kids and I like my job huh. is to serve them. <laughs> so they sometimes drive me crazy. Like when my daughter wakes me up in the night. That'll always be the case. But yeah. Love you, babe. <laughs> I don't usually wake you up in the night. <laughs> not days. usually. No, not anymore. But I mean, yeah. I mean, that, that's part of why I'm- 20 going... some years ago, it might have been a different story though. <laughs> that's, that's part of why I'm going now is because I am having a baby in a few months and things are going to be upended and things are going to be crazy. And I'm going to have and less- beautiful. Crazy and beautiful. And I'm going to have less- well, Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I actually wish the baby would come now, but I'm going to have even less coping skills because I'm going to be more tired. I'm going to be more like physically challenged in terms of like having more physical like needs of me that are You've done a good job of teaching your your little ones to help out. I mean, they're going to be great help. (laughs) They are. They always say they're going to help change the baby's yeah. diaper. They always say that. I Get us a puppy. I'll take it for a walk. I'll clean up that. I'll feed it. I'll water it. I mean, kids have physical For one day, needs. I'll do that. Kid, well, the nice thing is <laughs> newborn babies have a lot of physical needs, but they don't really have a lot of emotional needs. It's, it's the oh, emotion. Not that you notice. Their, their, their emotional needs are fed through the physical. Yes. Yeah, they're it's, they're it's, fed at the same it's time. It's like sacraments. Yeah, it's like the the graces become physical, the physical expression, the physical bodily expression of the graces that God gives us, of His love and His providence. I feel like one of the things my counselor told me, which I've realized is much of more of a struggle for me than I thought, is she's like, you need to have more compassion on yourself. Because yeah. she's like, you feel guilty because you're not, you're, you're, you know, not doing a good job of taking care of, taking care of those billions of people in the world <laughs> No, but like, that we talked about this morning. <laughs> no, but like I, you know, I'll have, I'll, I'll struggle with anxiety and then I'll feel guilty about it. Cause it's like, I know, I know that I need to just tell my brain like to stop. But I'm, I, it's like not helpful to-, to I feel get, anxious about my anxiety. Yeah, now. yeah. But <laughs> I've got meta anxiety. I said, like, I, I told her, like, I feel like I put all these uh, requirements on myself because I feel like I'm a really lazy person. And she's like, I think you're actually a hardcore perfectionist and you tell <laughs> yourself that you're lazy- as like a coping mechanism for like as a as a um a justification for being perfectionistic so what do you think about that and i was like dang that's probably really true like i but but i and given that it's probably really true what do you need to do when you find yourself beating yourself up it's hard because i part of part of having a baby i've learned this twice now part of having a newborn baby is there's a lot of things that I do as a normal part of my routine that just, I can't do anymore. I can't, right. I can't stay up for hours after the kids go to bed and do chores after the, after the baby's born, I'm going to okay. have to be nursing the baby okay. and I'm going to have to let a lot of things go and be like, okay, you know what? If you don't vacuum the floor well enough, I can't go back and do it again. I just have to let it go. Okay. And like, that's, that's the hard thing. Why is that hard? Because I don't like, I, I feel like my environment is what's a reflection a more, of the state, of, my more state help, of mind. What's a more helpful way to look at it? That it'll get done eventually and it's just yeah, doesn't need to be done Everything that today. needs to get done is going to get done eventually. Yeah. There's no rush. I get like that. Mm-hmm. That's the thing is like, it, it's Let kind the, of, the, you know, we don't need no water. Let the. Sucker burn. It'll, it'll eventually go out on its own. It's kind of like the <laughs> the four agreements about like always doing the best you can, but the best you can is going to be different from day to day. And That's it's true. like, yeah, I need to accept that. And it's hard. Acceptance but. is the is really difficult. 
because yeah. we because we care about things and we want things to be a certain way. We want things to be nice, but we live in a world where you know keep wanting in one hand. Yeah. And pooping in the other and see which one fills up first. Yeah, and this kind of gets back to we can wrap People this hate up. when I say that. We can wrap this up because we've been going for a while. Because they I, don't understand it. It took me like 25 years to understand that. To and understand then I that. We got it. I, when that was little and you'd say that, I'd be like, I don't understand what you even mean. But someday you will, grasshopper. Anyway, <laughs> I um so I've been watching these. If you rec- if you if you recognize that reference, put it in the, put it yeah. in the comments. I've been watching the the Jordan Peterson Maps of Meaning lectures because I have been wanting to read his book Maps Maps of Meaning, and I think his lectures are those helpful. are like a thousand hours. I have a lot of time when I'm doing dishes and uh, a lot of time when I'm doing other things. <sighs> you see. What? I send her crap all the time. To read. And not she's to like, oh, to. I can't get to that. I, I'm I don't too have, busy. I don't have time to sit. I don't have time to sit and read. If I'm scrubbing a Jordan toilet. Peterson if I'm scrubbing a toilet, says, I can listen to a podcast at the same time, which is a beautiful thing about podcasts. As he says, it's Smokey like Smokey Pickleton says something. It, it's like whatever. He talks oh my a lot. Lord. He talks a lot. Jordan Peterson, when he talks every here's, here's, every kernel is treasure. <laughs> here's what you need to do. If you want me to be able to consume something, you need to record it on a voice memo and send it to me. And then I will gladly have time to listen to it. You want me to read stuff to you? <laughs> Just read it out. Anyway, the whole point of this is that uh, he taught, he's been talking a lot about human nature and why our human nature is the way it is. Um, and I've just found it very insightful and helpful. And I think that that's a, a good, especially like I, I, this, this idea of he, he talks a lot about actually like kind of how, anyway, I don't want to go into a whole new topic. Yeah. Yeah. But we should watch his lectures. They're very good. I think they're good. Yeah. I, 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 I'm mocking you, but, uh, I do like the Jordan Peterson stuff. He's great. We've talked about that before. I, I've watched. I've watched a lot of his uh, biblical analysis, and I just thought it was genius. But his stuff about psychology helps me with my like thinking about my mental health and like the counseling stuff and like all of that as well. Like it makes it makes me understand why. You know, like they talk in the happiness trap, which we've talked about a lot of times. Mm-hmm. But they talk about that in the very beginning. They talk about why we have like anxious thoughts and why we have, why our brain's always jumping to like the worst thing. Like why, when I was woken up at 3.30 last night and then my kid went back to bed, like I couldn't sleep because I'm having all these like anxious thoughts. But it's like, there's like, there's a reason for that. And there's a survival value to that. Yeah, and he, he talks- If you don't think about what bad things might happen, they're going to catch you by surprise and you will not be prepared. Well, and he even says, like, we always tell kids there's no monsters. Like, you know, the, a kid will say, like, there's a monster in the dark. And they'll be like, we say to them, there's no monster in the dark. But he's like, that is not true. And we know there that. are monsters in the dark. <laughs> and for mo- and it's for hard for us to sell it. <laughs> and for a lot of a lot of human history there were creatures in the dark who wanted to eat small tasty children like he talks about that a lot and so it's like yeah and the kids who weren't anxious about it who just played in the dark kids who weren't got eaten kids who weren't tough enough to fight them off so it's did not pass on their genes in a way so we're tough yeah and anxious it's good to it's good to have that anxiety but we also and even now, there's there are monsters out there. I learned that in Virtue's training. There like, are monsters. There are monsters out there. There be dragons. and there are monsters who yeah who want to prey on. And it's like uh, like a, the the other thing that's been coming up a lot lately for me thinking about it is like spiritual warfare, especially because it was on Wednesday. It was the feast of Saint Michael the Archangel, who and literally like he yeah the prayer is obviously all about spiritual warfare but he also like got that sweet sword 
Yeah. I mean, he, he was the one who cast the, the bad angels into hell after they re- rebelled against God. And then today is the feast of uh, the guardian angels. Mm-hmm. And it's like, there is a spiritual, like, I feel like this is something that I've been thinking a lot about, like my um, upbringing in the Catholic faith, going to Catholic school. I feel like something that was not emphasized enough was like, heaven and hell are real. And like, if you choose to disobey God, you in sin, like you will, it gets easier and easier Mm -hmm. to just keep sinning again and again. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon you're, you're going to reject God and you're going to be unhappy in this world and the next. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like it's even in the Baltimore catechism, which I use with my kindergartner, the, the first, the first communion catechism, um, you know, the, the, the fifth lesson is all about sin, personal, actual sin that we commit and it kills the life of Christ in our soul. Mm-hmm. And it like, it, it wounds our soul to the point where like, and that's know, been brought like in that, that and, and the whole concept of sin and the rejection of the concept of sin has been talked about uh, as being a basis for the cultural degradation that we've gone through you know people people are no longer accountable for the moral consequences of their choices yeah. uh because everybody's a victim everybody's got their everybody's got their reasons for doing what yeah. they're doing and and everybody's got their truth yeah and uh there is no you know objective truth according to some and so there is no, there's no sin. Yeah. If there's no truth, there's no such thing as a lie. Yeah. Cause there's, cause everybody's, everybody's lies uh, are equal to the truth. And like the Baltimore catechism says, sin is disobedience to God's law. If you don't believe in God and don't believe that there are laws that are applicable to everyone, it's then real there's, easy. No, there's no such thing as sin. You can, anything that you can do can be justified. Anything goes. Yeah. Anyway, we've really yeah, is that we've gone on for a while. Um, I think that, uh, I don't know. My, my Fitbit said nothing new here. <laughs> that's funny um yeah i think this i i don't know this is sitting here for an hour i guess this is probably a um kind of a rambling episode i've i have a lot of things that i've just been and that's different (laughs) it's not but we it used to be all the ramblings of one week in an episode now it's all the ramblings of a month and we pack a lot more ramble (laughs) so hopefully you can pull out some some actual truth from from this and uh yeah we'll see you hopefully you can watch this while you're washing dishes and you can have a sink full of clean dishes at the end of this or a a clean toilet or gardening all the time whatever you choose the next hard thing that you choose to do to make life better yep do the harder thing there you go he actually has a podcast if you'd like to listen to it um i have only listened to one episode so i can't necessarily say that i recommend it but his Instagram is uh, pretty good about being hardcore about things. His Instagram made me realize I probably should not take my kids trick or treating, and that's a story for another day. But we'll uh, we'll come to that closer to Halloween. Yeah. Anyway, bye everybody. Hope you have a good week. Blessings on you all. Talk to you later.